Yes, it's that time once again to spend the next half hour or so in the company of myself, Wilbur Fitzgerald, and the studio team right here in Belfast. And we're bringing you, as always, our usual mix of faith-building, words, and music. Now, adding to the musical dimension of this program, we have Jesse Dixon, Sandy Patty, and Big John Hall. That is sure some mix. You'll be hearing from Big John later during the message, but right now we start with that expressive voice of Sandy Patty as she shares her faith with us in the words of four very well-known and cherished hymns. Now please, don't forget to sing along, because we'll be doing just that.
Yes, indeed. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Praise God. Wonderful words of faith there. Finishing that medley of cherished gospel hymns and songs from the one and only Sandy Patty. I trust that you enjoyed that and that you were able to join in with most of them as we were right here in the studios. There's a great blessing still to be experienced in yesterday's melodies, helped, of course, by the wonderful and the very creative orchestral arrangements, which, of course, there is in abundance over there in the States. Well, now, we'll move on, and you've all heard of the very famous Jesse James. Well, tonight we're joining the company of a gentleman called Jesse Dixon, and he's also from the States. Jesse is now a statesman of gospel music, and he has been coming to Belfast since the 1970s. James and a couple of the team actually heard him live at Calvary Temple over there in the States some years ago. That, incidentally, was the church where they heard Mike Atkins. Now, you've all heard Mike Atkins, you know, the one who sings Don't Give Up on the Brink of a Miracle. Well, Jesse Dixon was there too at that particular conference, along with his wonderful pianist, Elsa Harris. So we're going to join him now by cassette, along with a multitude of singers and musicians at a concert recording titled Jesse Dixon Live in the Spirit and the wonderful, well-known and easily sung worship song, Alleluia. So join in if you know it, and if you don't, I can guarantee that you soon will. Just wonderful. Yes, that was Jesse Dixon and friends leading us in anointed worship from his cassette, Jesse Dixon, Live in the Spirit. Powerful stuff altogether. Really super. Well, this is Hour of Deliverance, and I trust that you're enjoying the program so far. If you would like to share it with someone or are having trouble with reception, then just write after the program, and we'd be delighted to send you a copy of the program Here's a better idea. Just have pen and paper ready to take down our details later on. Well, right now, James Horner stirs us in the words of, I will build my church. Since the days when Jesus Christ walked the streets of Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, 
there's always been a controversy of who he really was. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked his disciples this question, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? The same problem of identity of Jesus is with us today. The rise of so many religions and the turning to so many other religions by our so-called civilized people of the Western world has challenged the Christian church to prove that Jesus of Nazareth was the Christ and that he is the God-man in human flesh. The disciples of Jesus answered his question. Some answered, You are John the Baptist, and some people say that you are Elijah the prophet of old resurrected, or even one of the prophets like Jeremiah come back to life. Then Jesus asked the most important question, Who do you say that I am? To you who are listening to this broadcast at this moment, let me ask you the same question. Who do you think Jesus Christ is? You may not realize that this is the most important question you have ever been asked, because your life here and your life hereafter will depend on your answer to this question. Peter, the disciple of Jesus, answered the question correctly. You are the Christ the Son of the living God. If your answer is the same as Peter's, you are on to the greatest discovery of your life. Jesus turned to Peter and said, On this rock I will build my church. It was on the rock of Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that the Christian church is really built. Today, there is a multiplicity of gods invented by man in this world, some made of wood, some made of stone. God made man and everything that is living on this earth because he is the creator. No man can make his own god out of wood or stone or any other material. Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This suggests that man is also a spirit housed in a body of flesh, created by God for his existence in a material world, but to worship God in a spiritual world. In this generation we are living in the greatest outpouring of God's spirit ever witnessed in this world that history has ever seen. We know that all the miracles that Jesus performed are not recorded in the Bible, but the book of Acts, a record of the mighty outpouring of God's Spirit upon mankind after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Acts record the continued power of the Christian gospel, producing mighty miracles through the ministry of the disciples of Christ. Today, More things are happening in our world than happened in the entire book of the Acts. There are certain countries and continents that are in the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit ever recorded in history. I am indebted to Pastor Jeff Vesey for the following. The most amazing things are happening in parts of Africa, in parts of the East and Eastern Europe and in Indochina because Jesus is building his church. On his way back from some of the countries that Pastor Vesey had visited, he says as he flew back into Great Britain, the nearer he came to the Western world, the atmosphere seemed to get colder and heavier and more and more difficult in church life. And he said, And when I hear those wonderful words, I will build my church, I wonder what on earth is happening in our Western world especially in our country today. Our land is given over to violence, and our land is controlled by humanists who believe that man is God and controls his own destiny. The city streets are fearful places. We read of attacks every single day. We hear of child abuse and violence, and our nation is not awash with the blessing of God. Our nation is awash with violence, sin, and crime. I walk into the Christian bookshops. I see on every shelf the stories of Indonesia, the stories of Latin America, the stories of Africa, the stories of Eastern Europe, 
where churches are colossal and people are coming to Christ in droves. The heart cry of many of our listeners is, Lord, build your church here in our land. I firmly believe that this Hour of Deliverance broadcast is of God and is a tool in the hand of God to awaken the slumbering Christians to rise to a new day of God's power available to our nation. My eyes are often wet with tears as I cry out to God to send His Holy Spirit in a new wave of revival to our land once again. My cry is return, return, O heavenly dove, return, and save our people now. In the United States of America, there are megachurches with great congregations of more than 5,000 people for which we praise God. But greater things are happening in the second and third world nations. It is reported that the largest single church has grown in Argentina with a membership of over two million members. Argentina was a country that was completely demoralized through the Falklands War with Britain. Now, thousands of people are turning to God. The prophet Joel prophesied that in these closing days of time, there would be multitudes in the valley of decision. The cry of the prophet has echoed down the centuries, put ye in the sickle and reap the harvest. There are multitudes in the valley of decision, and it's all happening now before our very eyes. In Korea, Korea boasted of the largest church with 850,000 members. We thought this could never be surpassed. But now Argentina is experiencing one of the greatest revivals ever recorded. There can never be such revival in this nation until she comes to her knees and acknowledges that Jesus Christ is Lord. God needs men and women of that caliber that can cry out the warning, that warning of danger of our current lifestyles. The Bible says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm. They rush on the city, they ride on the wall. But great is the army that carries his word. They rush on the city, they ride on the wall. But great is the army that carries his word. The Lord utters his voice before the army. The Lord utters his voice. On the city, they ride on the wall. But great is the army that carries his word. The Lord utters his word. Jesus said, They who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Have you noticed that wherever the presence of the devil is, People will stay for hours. They will sing along with all the dirty songs for hours in clubs and pubs. This is what they call enjoying themselves. This becomes their only lifestyle. But to us, the Bible says we are the sons of God. It is that sonship that guarantees us an entry at all times into the presence of God. We don't enter his presence when we step over a church threshold. The Bible teaches that Jesus lives in us. We are his children, and he is with us at all times. 
God is a God of miracles. Every child of God is a vessel filled with the supernatural power and presence of God. Jesus never divorced the miracle of sins forgiven from the miracles of healing or the miracles of deliverance. Jesus has never left his church. And I am not speaking about that organized body that has organized Jesus out and voted men in. In a human body, Jesus begun his work on earth. But here is the secret of his power. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That human body ceased to exist when Jesus rose from the dead, and he chose another body to contain the supernatural power on earth. It is called the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, capable to go into all the world and preach his gospel to every creature and to perform the same miracles as Jesus did. His first body had only one tongue. His second body has millions of tongues, bringing the good news of deliverance to set the captives free. Every disciple has the same power as Jesus had. I give you power over all the power of Satan, he said. This is why Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, because his body is still performing the same miracles. If we claim that God is with us, then all things that God has done through his disciples, he will do through us. In Nigeria, there was a meeting attended by 120,000 people in a football stadium. They were only singing, just singing praises to God. Suddenly, the whole meeting was interrupted. People were shouting, I can see, I can hear, I can walk. Miracles were happening everywhere. Nobody prayed for people. There was no healing line. There was just singing and praising. When God, who was in the midst of them, started to do his mighty works by his power, At the end of the service, they piled up crutches, wheelchairs, and bed frames, and people went home healed by Jesus. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When we come to church, liberated in worship, we realize the power of God, and we realize that anything can happen. We release the atmosphere to cause miracles to happen. Christianity is not just a miracle concept. The power of God overrides our natural human power, bringing powers that are alien into the obedience to the will of God. The Apostle Paul said, Let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. And this makes it possible for Jesus to work his miracles by letting him control our minds so that doubt is erased and faith can perform his miracles. One of the most popular songs that came out some years ago had the title, I Did It My Way. I was with Billy Graham at a conference in Amsterdam at that time, and I met Cliff Richard. There we were talked together for a very long time. One morning, Billy asked Cliff to sing. He rose to his feet, and the melody of the popular song filled the great hall. All the words of the song were the same until he came to the end of the first verse. And then Cliff raised his eyes to the skies and sang, I did it God's way. Friends, listeners, I have preached for many years. There was a time when I discovered the Christ of miracles and found the secret of preaching God's way. I lost many friends. But now I can say, what a friend I have in Jesus, all my sins and griefs to bear. Jesus said, I will build my church, and he's doing it his way. And one of the greatest discoveries the church has made today is the mighty liberating power of praise and worship in song.
And now every Christian can have this wonderful baptism of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized with his mighty power. And I'm going to pray for you now. And if you feel that you have never realized this mighty experience, just come over to your radio set now and I'm going to pray with you. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and you see so many people who've been listening to this broadcast tonight and many Christians. I ask you, Lord, for those who are reaching out for your power to baptize them now in your mighty power. Come upon them like you did on the day of Pentecost in the name of Jesus. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow once again. Breathe into their very spirits now and release them to be the servants of Jesus Christ to go and build his church. Do it now, Lord, we pray you. We bless you. We believe that you're moving now among your people listening to this broadcast. Dear Father, I come to you for those who are sick and suffering, the mighty miracle worker who causes disease to be destroyed, who is a mighty healer. Now, Lord, stretch forth your mighty healing hand over the nation. In Jesus' name, heal, heal, heal everyone who is reaching out in faith, asking for your deliverance. Deliver men and women at this present time from every disease, Lord, from every condition of mind and body. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. And for those, Lord, who are bereaved at this time. O oh God, you're the God of all comfort. Be with them, strengthen them. Let them feel there is another standing beside them. And it's you in all your glory and all your love. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. Amen. Well, I trust you were blessed by this evening's archive edition of Deliverance, presented by Wilbur Fitzgerald, and the address was from the late James Horner. If you would like a copy of this or any of our programmes free of charge on CD or tape, or you would like special prayer help or information, our email address is letters at deliverancebroadcasting.org. That's letters at deliverancebroadcasting, all one word, dot org. And so, on behalf of Wilbur Fitzgerald and the studio team, this is David McClellan saying, till we meet again, goodbye, and God bless you all. Goodbye. From the city, they ride on the wall. But great is the army that carries his word. The Lord.